super light. Like I kind of want it to look like the pattern on the wood. You kind of want it to look almost like, the only thing I think of is like a men's five o'clock shadow on his face. Um, that's kind of how the pattern looks on the wood. And then for my brush, I'm literally just like touching the very top of the brush. I'm not putting a ton of paint on there at all. Um, and then it glides really smoothly. So there is a little bit of a learning curve to this chalk paint. So, and then I wanna show you what happens if you put too much water, I don't want you to freak out. Um, if you don't put enough water, it just, it doesn't really glide and then you end up using too much paint. Um, so if you put too much water on, okay. Put a little bit of paint on there. Again, just a little tiny bit. So it ends up kind of bleeding. I don't know if you can see that. Um, it ends up kind of bleeding. I'll go like this. See that. Okay, so add a little bit too much water. Right, so now I've got like a puddle of water right here. Right there. And yeah, that's way too much water, right? But it's okay, okay? So all we're gonna do is add just a little bit more paint and just spread it out over that surface. And you'll see, you'll kind of get like little air bubbles, like right there. Again, don't freak out, okay? Just spread it out over the surface. So instead of working in like a five by five inch area, work in like a foot by foot inch area. And just really spread it out. And it's okay if it makes the paint look really thin um, because we're gonna add coats to it anyway. So see, now you can see like it's just, it's not spreading as good. I think you can see, no you can't not spreading as good now that I've kind of spread out that water and so it's starting to get like sticky right there okay so that's your indication that you need to add more water okay so another um, technique that I've figured out works really nicely um, so like this area right here is really just too small for me to spray with the, the overall mister. Um, so another good way to do this is to take your brush and just gently spray the tip of it just to get that moisture on the actual brush. And then again, I'm not putting, like that's what my brush looks like after I dip it in the paint. I'm only putting like a few drops of paint on my brush at a time. And that way it just glides on really smoothly because it's got that moisture in it. But I'm not adding a ton of water. So you can see how far that, you know, little amount of paint went almost all the way to the end there. Okay. So that first coat is dry and you can kind of see like you can see through really really well like there's a lot of streaking and you know but here's that area where we had the too much water added um, you can see it's completely dry uh, it's only been maybe an hour hour and a half and it's completely dry um, you know, lots of streaking, but that's okay. Um, so let's move on to the next steps. Okay, I'm using 240 just cause that's what I have on hand. 220 is perfectly fine also. And just really lightly, um, you know, I'm not using a heavy hand here and I'm really only just gonna go over it a little bit. Um, 
I'm just gonna go over the top a little bit just to get rid of those uh, paint strokes. Okay, again, I'm not trying to take off, like trying to take off paint or sand down anything. Um, I'm just trying to smooth out those paint strokes to give my uh, next coat a nice, uh, much smoother appearance. So this is just all the, I have a wet rag, it's just water, nothing else. Um, just to wipe that dust off. Okay. In between coats, I like to put my brush in a bag just to keep the paint from drying out. Um, and this bucket will come in handy later. Don't worry about it right now. bottle just because this is the first time um, I am gonna spray the brush just to get some moisture on there paintbrush before and I said it would come in handy. Now's the time. So I have my water-based poly acrylic here. Uh, it's going to be in a clear mat and it's well loved. So I'm going to pour maybe like a half a cup cup in there like so. And then because this is a dark paint and I don't want extra streaking or um, splotching, whatever, I'm going to put some of the chalk paint, same color that I used in the navy. That's what it's called. I'm not in the navy. That's what the paint is called. So anywhere between a teaspoon or... Uh, a tablespoon is probably good. And then you're gonna just mix that and it's gonna look a little hazy and that's okay. Um, it's just gonna prevent a little bit of that hazing on the surface because it's a dark color. I don't really want to make the surface appear milky at all. So, and just for the sake of demonstration. Now, unlike the chalk paint, this you want to lay on just a little bit thicker and you want to be careful to avoid bubbles. Poly, the polyacrylic is a little notorious, um, I must say, for creating bubbles in the paint. And you don't want that because those bubbles will stay and then you'll end up having to sand them off. So you want to paint in a way that um, doesn't introduce a lot of air. So I like using a paintbrush, um, but you can spray this on as well. I like to put the first coat on, let it dry, uh, and then the second coat, I'm gonna use a technique to try to avoid streaking. Okay, so one of the issues with using this fast drying polyacrylic and using a brush is you can get these really horrendous streaks um, in the finish. Now, you won't get this if you use a sprayer, um, but unfortunately, the only place that I can spray personally is my garage, and it is too cold out there in Wisconsin right now to spray. So I try to use a brush, um, 
And how I do that is, or how I fix these streaks is, you know, I take my paint mixture like I had before. Um, and ideally I would sand, but for the purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to show you kind of how, how I do this with a paintbrush. If you don't have a sprayer or you don't want to invest in a sprayer, uh, this is an option that you could do. So I put the paint on and I want to make sure that I put it on pretty thick because I don't want any drag marks, which can create those streaks also. Um, and I'm working quickly uh, to make sure that it doesn't start to dry before I can uh, do what I need to do here. So I'm laying it on in a reasonably thick layer, um, trying to avoid, okay, trying to avoid like layering it too much because then you'll get that milky appearance. So what I'm going to do once I get the entire area covered is go back and forth against the grain. Okay. And then very lightly, like I'm barely holding the brush, go back against, or <clears throat> excuse me, with the grain and just drag your brush very lightly. And I hope you can kind of see that it is kind of creating a pattern, but as it dries, that will level out a little bit. And then this will give me an opportunity too to show you guys Another um, thing you want to avoid with polycrylic, the reason I don't like it. So you see these drips right here and how it's kind of a milky white color. If it's laid on too thick and that's left that way, it will stay that color. So you want to be really careful that you take your brush and make sure that you get rid of that access or excess, access, excess. So there's another spot right there. That will look horrible once it's dry and it will be really difficult to get rid of and you, the only way really to get rid of it is to sand it off. So just take a light hand and brush that off. So again, really lightly if it starts to, if your brush starts to skip or drag, that's probably we, you've waited too long and those drag marks will end up being permanent and you'll have to re, redo this process to get those drag marks out. So now you can see where we had the, the marks before, you can't see them anymore. <laughs> 